guys, how's it going? And welcome to our video on how to program the Eashin SS Boat uh, 125 Amp ESC. This is an ESC that I picked up from Banggood.com. They carry also the 200 Amp version. Um, I didn't see on their site where they had the lower versions, but it's possible they got them there somewhere. Um, but I, I needed at least a, a 125 Amp uh, ESC for my Genesis boat. And uh, so anyways... Um, this works off tones and beats for programming each of your features. And you, you have things like cell type, throttle setting, brake setting, direction and cutoff type, uh, timing mode, and a PWM setting. Um, now, the thing is, you, you have to know the equipment that's in front of your face um, that you've got so that you know how to set it up properly. And... Um, so anyways, um, with this ESC, of course, it has no reverse, so you don't have to worry about reverse. Um, when you go and you hook up your brushless motor, if it doesn't run the right direction for your propeller on your boat initially, um, you can either program it for the right direction, or you can reverse any two wires. It's up to you. Um, so it doesn't really, there's no specific order for plugging things into a brushless motor, um, but to get the right direction... Uh, you may have to not only program it, but also flip the two wires too. That can happen as well. Um, it varies. So you'll know if you got wind coming out, hitting your hand at the back of the prop, you know your motor's turning the right way. Um, it also will change if you're running counterclockwise props or clockwise props. So you really got to understand and know the stuff that you've got in front of you, and then it makes it that much easier to, to set things up. Now, with this ESC, they, they say that even with this ESC, it runs 2 to 7S. That is actually false. It will not run a 2S LiPo for the cutoff programming. However, you can run a 2S LiPo if you program the ESC for NIM and you use either a LiPo cutoff circuit separate, which I would advise, or a LiPo alarm, which you may or may not even hear it when it's sealed inside the hull. Okay, so a LiPo cutoff circuit of your own that you can purchase separately would probably be your best bet if you run or want to run 2S on your boat um, with this ESC. Otherwise, your main programming is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7S and your uh, NIM and uh, NICAD batteries. Um, so anyways, I've got a Traxxas 7 cell battery out here that I'm going to use because um, I'm going to program it for NIM. And... Um, so we're going to go through cell counts, throttle setting, and brake setting are the three main options we're going to concentrate on on this video. This is just to get you guys started so you get an idea of what you're listening for and how to do things. So just as a bit of an explanation, um, before you even plug in your ESC, of course make sure your receiver is hooked up. Your motor must be hooked up, by the way, uh, because that's where the tones are generated from, is from your motor. So you must have your motor uh, hooked in. So either take it out of your boat or leave it in the boat. It's up to you. Um, to get started, you pull the trigger in all the way. Okay, this is for pistol grip users. Um, pull the trigger in all the way as if you're floored. Then you're going to have to uh, go either with a second person, which would be helpful, or you figure out how to, you know, fiddle around and get this thing to plug in. Um, and then you let go once you're plugged in. Now... You're going to hear uh, a music tone and a beep. Now, you get three shots at every single one of these programming features that you're messing with, okay? Um, so it'll go music tone, beep, music tone, beep, music tone, beep. And if you don't get it by the third one, it's going to start out with music tone, two beeps, music tone, two beeps. So if you screw up, just unplug it. Don't worry, you're fine. You know, plug back in, full throttle all the way because you got to get into the programming. Listen for that music tone. So music tone one beat. I always go to the second one just to make sure I've got it there, okay? So second time it does music tone one beat, you let go of the throttle. And then on, make sure you have your page set up. So we're going to program for the NIM pack, which is one short, one long. So it'll go beep, 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 okay, type of thing, right? So once you hear that tone, because that's what you want, okay, Immediately pull in on the trigger. Okay, you'll hear another tone. As soon as you hear it, immediately go into full reverse and let it sit there until you hear two completion beeps. And then you won't hear anything else after that. Once that happens, then you let go. 
of the trigger. It finishes the programming. Your motor on this ESC will actually fire up all by itself. So at that point, you unplug and it saves that setting. You plug back in, you're good to go. If you program for the wrong LiPo cell count, I did this just for giggles to see what would actually happen, although I kind of had a good idea and I was right. Um, I, I went for, say, a, a 4S hookup, um, you know, as far as this is what I wanted, but I used a two cell battery. So I got one pull of the trigger and that was it. And then it wouldn't activate the motor again because the cutoff voltage is set for three volts per cell on any of these LiPo cutoffs. They're all down to three volts per cell, which is your, you know, maximum safety limit type of thing, right? So as soon as there's enough pull on the battery that you get three volts per cell, boom, the LiPo cutoff kicks in, okay? And uh, it saves your battery. So if you're gonna run a two cell battery with this ESC, you, you must have a LiPo alarm or a LiPo cutoff circuit that can cut it off at whatever voltage you've programmed it so you can also get your boat back too at the same time um, you know so you want to make sure you don't have to go for a swim um, but to get to the 4s mode you will have to listen for one short and five long beeps it'll be like beep and then it'll go beep 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 type of thing right it'll go for five long beeps right if it goes four four long well then you're at 5s so you got to get to the five long beeps to go to 4s and six long beeps uh, with that one short beep for 3S. So let's get started. So first thing you need to do, of course, is have everything hooked up, except for your battery. Turn your radio on, pull your trigger in, and we're gonna plug the battery in and we're gonna listen for our tones. So we let go. Pull, beep, reverse. Hold it. Two beeps. Let go. So now we're programmed for NIM. Okay. So we got to start over again. Now what's going to happen is when you start over again for each thing, you're always going to start off with one tone, one beep, as if it's trying to go for cells, because it's just opened up the program. So you're going to have to wait until this time we get a music tone and two beeps. Okay. Like I said, you get three shots at this side to get in three shots to program the feature all right so throttle setting our throttle setting you have two setups by the way that you need to do in throttle setting on this thing um, and regardless of where default range little markers are don't pay attention to this stuff on any EC. I don't care who makes it because they could have been wrong uh, mistypes happen so I, I went through and I made sure I programmed it exactly where I want it so we're gonna go for auto throttle range okay um, hard start is their default and soft start uh, is another option. So you got to go into the throttle setting once and you got to go for where you want your throttle of the first two top choices. Get it, program it, unplug, plug back in, go back into throttle setting again, but this time you're going to have to wait until you hear two short and three long if you want a hard start or two short and four long if you want a soft start. But we're just going to do the main throttle setup here. Uh, I've already programmed mine for the soft start, right? And I don't want this video going on forever either. This is just to get you guys going. So again, you got to pull the trigger. Two beeps. Plug it, saves it, plug it back in. To me, that sounds like we made a boo boo here. Oh, did we? No, we're okay. We got it set. So you'll know, right? We didn't make a boo-boo. If you, if you did make a boo-boo though and it didn't work out right, simply unplug, plug it back in.
up, we're all set. Okay, so the next one we're going to go to is brake setting. And we're going to set this thing up for no brake. Okay. But before we set it for no brake, I want to show you what it does on a hard brake. Okay, this gives you a really good idea of the big difference here. So we need to wait for three short and four long once we get into that part of the programming. Of course, now we've got to wait for one music tone and three beeps. Three short and one long is no break. Soft break is too long. Three short, too long. And three short, three long is medium break. We need three short and four long. Listen to the motor when I let go of the trigger. It stops it fast. Okay, if that's what you want, knock yourself silly. Me, I prefer to have no brake. Okay, or even a soft brake would be good if this, depending on the size of the boat. But I go for no brake. So now we need to reprogram for no brake. Okay, so no break, it should spin down. And it does. So, that's your basics on how to program this ESC. And you have other features too, uh, which is going to be direction cutoff type. Um, which could be as simple as flipping any two wires, do it that way. It is defaulted, they say, at clockwise rotation. Um, and depending on your prop, you go clockwise or counterclockwise. And you'll know as soon as you pull the trigger if you're doing this with it in the boat. Um, and you're going to need to do it with it in the boat to program this one because you've got to feel that wind coming at your hand from the back of the prop. Then you know the prop's turning in the right direction. Otherwise, it's like running in reverse, right? Um, soft cutoff, hard cutoff. I went for soft cutoff uh, for the direction type. Um, timing mode setting. This is extremely important. Um, you know, 2 to 4 pole, 6 to 8 pole, 10 to 14 pole outrunners, uh, which you've got to kind of ignore the outrunner part of this. Um, Hobby King told me that this is a 12 pole motor, and to get to 12 pole timings, um, it's into the outrunner class here on this set of instructions. But I still have to run this at 15 degrees timing because of how many poles this motor has. Now, even though a few forums said two poles, I think I'm going to take Hobby King's word for it um, and see how it runs too. Uh, you know, because I got very short run times with two 5,000 milliamp packs in there on 4S, and I should have got a lot more play time out of it uh, if the poles were set up properly. Um, so we're going to try it at 15 degrees and. That's also going to give us a little bit of extra power, too, at the same time um, when we're doing that, and, which was another thing. I noticed a lack of power uh, happening uh, after a short run. Um, I just, like, lose all my, you know, awesome authority power. You know, I was like, what happened? I'm like, are my batteries dead? Um, well, it'll suck the life out of your batteries pretty quick if, they're, if it's not set right. Um, so, anyways, I've set this back up uh, for... for uh, 10 to 14 poles because it's a 12 pole motor uh, so Hobby King tells me and we're going to see what that's like in the boat once I can get the boat back in the water on a 4S setup and we'll see exactly how that is, is running and doing with battery life and 
continuous power throughout my, my playtime. The pulse width modulation setting, I've talked to a few boat experts about this, and they say uh, to basically, uh, because it's a low RPM uh, type of motor, um, but of course it does have low pole, pole count, they say leave it on 8 kilohertz, because even a lot of these guys, even running the higher RPM, higher pole counts, they're still running at the 8 kilohertz range. And I, I've listened to the motor running myself and haven't noticed a difference in either one. Um, and then, of course, the 16 kilohertz, it says for most outrunners, okay? Um, so it still works with inrunners, but it's for most outrunners. So, and this is an inrunner motor. So, you know, but anyways, um, you can take that any way you like with that programming. I would just leave it as uh, 8 kilohertz anyways and go from there. But, that's how you program this thing for pistol grip radios. Um... So far, I'm finding this to be a very good, reliable ESC for 35 bucks. I mean, hey, you know, it works great. Water-cooled, everything. It's good stuff. Um, you don't always have to buy the really expensive brand-name stuff to get something decent, you know. And the last time my Genesis was running, uh, previous to my being the owner of it, my buddy had it. He ran a 180-amp Turnigy ESC in it that actually caught fire. Um, you know, we don't know exactly what went wrong to cause it, but the thing is, is, you know, you get a little gun shy after you see somebody's ESC light up, and I figured, you know what, I got two of these, uh, for still less money than that 180, and free shipping on these, so, you know, I got a spare if I need it, no big deal, but, um, anyways, guys, thanks for watching, if you got questions, feel free to ask, and I'll do the best I can to answer them, but, um, I think this will pretty much cover it um, as far as, you know, basic programming, how to get into it. Um, and like I said, I'll have the link to download the Pistol Grip users version of the instructions uh, for this. And uh, so all you Pistol Grip guys, you'll uh, have no problem programming this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.